part. And I'm sure you're still processing it. The focus of this all hands is you. I know many of you want to know what has happened and what's next. And I want to answer all of your questions. That is what this all hands is all about. And we have a lot to cover. To start, I've seen many questions that talk about the process that got us to this point. So that's where we'll begin. I want to hand it off to Brett, the chairman of our board, to speak to you all directly about how we reached today's announcement. Brett. Yeah, thank you, Parag. Um, I, I want to talk through the process, but I actually just want to start by expressing my gratitude to all of you. Um, Running Twitter, like all of you do every day, is not an easy job. Um, there's a ton of stakeholders, a lot of opinions from the world. And running it amidst all that has been swirling around Twitter over the past few weeks is nothing short of remarkable. And um, the whole board, and I, I just want to speak on behalf of everyone, is just really grateful to all of you for keeping your heads down as you've been able to and, and keeping um, this train running. Um, I also just want to acknowledge all the emotions of today. Um, it is an emotional day. I want to acknowledge it. Um, and uh, I just really appreciate um, everyone uh, on this call. Um, so let's talk about the process. Um, the board received Elon Musk's proposal on April 14th. And since then, the board uh, took on a process that we really tried to make thoughtful, comprehensive, and deliberate. Um, and we've had a, a number of discussions between the two parties. When we were considering a pro the proposal, it was really in light of comparing it to the company's go forward prospects, um, the current market environment, and all the risks associated with achieving the operating plan of the company, among many other consideration considerations. Um, when we voted this morning, the vote to approve the transaction was unanimous at the board. Um, I think this process was comprehensive and thorough, and ultimately, we felt that this was the best path forward for Twitter and our shareholders. I think many of you understand this, but I also want to just explain the basics of what it means to be a board in this situation. Um, so we are a Delaware company. Uh, and as a board in a Delaware company, um, we have a fiduciary obligation to our shareholders, which means by law, we're required to act in the best interest of our shareholders. Um, what this means in Delaware is a duty of care and duty of loyalty. That means we have to act impartially without any conflict of interest, and we have to do our work thoroughly and deliberately. And I think that's what we did when we evaluated Elon's offer. Um, I know there were a ton of twists and turns along the way, all of it in public, um, and we weren't really able to share a lot of this with all of you during these discussions. Um, I want to assure you all that we acted swiftly, but we also took the time that we needed in order to make the right decision which is uh, one of the rights and one of the important things that we, we must do as a board in this situation. I just want to uh, end by just saying I'm extremely confident in Twitter's future. Um, I think Twitter is as important of a service in the world as it's ever been. And I just know that all of you are going to continue to build the service into everything that it can be. Um, being on this board and being affiliated with this company has been truly the privilege of my career. Um, so with that, back to you, Prabh. Thank you, Brad. Um, Before I talk about what lies ahead, it's important to acknowledge that all of you have many different feelings about what is happening. Some of you are very concerned. Some of you are very excited. And others are somewhere in between or waiting to see how this goes. I know this impacts each of you personally, professionally, and has you wondering about the future of Twitter. I want to start by sharing information that is most important to you. The deal was signed this morning, but there are a lot of steps between now and when the deal closes. There's a lot of work that lies ahead and still needs to be done. This work can take three to six months or it can take longer. In this moment, between deal signing and deal closing, we operate Twitter in normal course, just like we always have. I will be here running the company, serving our customers, 
making our product better every day. And I'll be here to enable each and every one of you to have your greatest impact. How we run the company and the decisions we make and the positive changes we drive, that will be on us and in our control. Next, I want to talk about compensation. Last time we spoke, a lot of your questions were about what this might, might mean in terms of compensation. We now have some answers. Until the deal closes, your compensation programs remain the same. Your RSUs will vest just as they always have. Once the deal closes, your RSUs as compensation will convert to equivalent cash payouts, but remain on the same vesting schedule and convert at the deal price of $54.20. Simply put, what this means is instead, once the deal closes as compensation, instead of receiving RSUs on a vesting schedule, you will receive an equivalent amount of cash on that same schedule. The deal also has protections around benefits, base salary, and bonus opportunities for, for them to remain the same for at least one year after the deal closes. I know many of you uh, will have more questions about compensation. Uh, we will please ask them. We want to address them in the Q&A we have ahead. And for questions we cannot answer, we'll follow up. I know there have also been requests to get a bunch of this stuff written down for you and clarified. And we will follow through on doing so as soon as we can. Before we jump into questions, I want to take a step back. Twitter has always been an outlier. It's a unique company. And what we are going through is unprecedented. I recognize that this is a period of uncertainty. The best thing we can do is to support each other, to operate as one team, whether or not we feel the same way about what is happening. We never owned Twitter, but we built it together. The work you all have done has had an impact on the world. The work you will do next will also matter. With that, let's get into questions. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Parag. Thank you, Brett. There are lots and lots of questions. Um, and as Parag said, we are also going to be following up, following this all hands, both on what's answered here, and then also any questions that um, are really important to you that we have not, will not be able to get to. So please, please do know that. Um, there are a number of questions, Parag, as it relates to how the company is operating today and what will happen. So questions about work from home, questions about our benefits, questions about um, folks who have visas. Can you just um, explain and um, um, give some context to like that whole host of questions that people have on their minds? Absolutely. Thanks for the questions. Um, as I said, between now and closing, we will continue to operate the company in normal course. We will continue making decisions as we always have, guided by the principles we've had, which that doesn't mean things won't change. Things have been changing. I've been in this role for four months. I have been talking about driving positive change at the company. I will continue doing so because it makes us better and it makes us stronger. Once the deal closes, different decisions might be made. For us to gain insight into that, we'll be finding a way to have Elon talk with all of you at the soonest possible opportunity. And of course, me, our board, members of our leadership team will find ways of spending time with Elon to learn more along the way. And as that happens, we'll be open and transparent with you. Thanks, Prague. This next question is for Brett. 
Brett, how is selling the company and making it private in the best interest of shareholders? Isn't this for selling their shares at a lower than current price and might also have negative tax implications for them? Um, so, uh, you know, I mentioned the board's fiduciary duties and really what that comes down to in a conversation like this is uh, measuring both the value and the certainty of an incoming offer relative to the intrinsic value of the operating plan of the company. Um, and when taking all into that into account, you take into account risk, um, you take into account market conditions um, on both sides, um, and you try to determine what's in the best long-term interests of uh, Twitter shareholders. In this case, as I said, um, the board, uh, as, with advice um, from, uh, I think, uh, world-class uh, financial advisors, legal advisors, unanimously decided that this offer represented a better value for Twitter shareholders. Thanks, Brett. Question for you, Prague. There were a few questions on this. I would love to know how this change will impact our overall DEI goals. Twitter is at its best when all diverse voices in the world feel safe and feel encouraged to engage in the public conversation. That belief is what drives us to have a diverse workforce internally on all dimensions, to have multiple perspectives and points of views represented internally so that we can empathize with all of our customers all around the world and serve them in the best possible way. That is a core belief of mine. That doesn't change. Question for Brett. Brett, how did we go from the poison pill to this so quickly? It's a great question because I think both the phrase poison pill and the concept um, has, is largely misunderstood. And I found a lot of the characterizations of it in the press not really capturing, I think, really the rights that affords a board, which are really important in a process like this. Um, I believe it was April 15th when we adopted the shareholder rights agreement, which has been called in the press the poison pill. That's the colloquial term for it. Really what it does is it prevents a shareholder from, an acquirer from gaining control of Twitter through open market accumulation. And it enables the board to sort of have control over the process to make sure that we can do our fiduciary duty and most importantly have the time to do it on our schedule to make sure we're protecting all shareholders. Um, uh, there's a, a few articles I didn't get this right. Um, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll, I'll maybe send it out afterwards. Um, but it's a very nuanced concept. But most importantly, um, the rights plan didn't prevent us from engaging uh, with the parties or of evaluating this acquisition proposal. Um, it really was about putting the board in control the, of the process so we could ensure that every single one of our shareholders' interests was represented in the process, um, which I think is a very important part of the role of a board in a situation like this. So we use that to take what I think is a really thoughtful and comprehensive process to assess the offer relative to the board's operating plan, um, assess the risks, um, at the end of the day, uh, as I mentioned, the board believes this transaction is really the best path forward for Twitter's uh, stockholders. Staying with you, Brett, Elon Musk took on a lot of debt to make this happen. How, do, how much risk does that present to us? Uh, as I mentioned, you know, as the board evaluates a proposal like this, it's both value and certainty. Um, and uh, you'll see in many of the public filings uh, but we a, a number of measures that we put in place um, to ensure financial certainty. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit technical, but that was a meaningful part of our due diligence and how we crafted the merger agreement. Thank you. Parag, can you clarify if there will be layoffs or not? There are no plans for any layoffs uh, at this time. Are we going to continue, this is for you, Brad. Are we going to continue working on our projects or are the priorities going to be drastically different? So our priorities today are not changing. As always, we operate in an environment which requires us to evolve our priorities as we learn more. We have to continue doing the work that I've been talking to all of us about for over the last several months. 
we've been talking about improving executions, making faster decisions, holding ourselves more accountable, learning more from data. And as those things happen, changing the work we do to best serve our customers. So we will continue driving positive change in order to best serve our customers. Parag, what does this mean for Twitter's commitment to responsible, ethical AI ML? We've been viewed as industry leaders in this field and have attracted some of the field's best and brightest minds, but it would seem that new ownership's values are not in alignment here. It's a matter of pride for us uh, that we've uh, done the work, built the team, and shown up externally uh, to be considered uh, a leader in this area. It is, as you have heard me describe previously, something that is really important for the future. It's important for the future because machine learning, I believe, is critical for Twitter to be able to serve our customers. At the same time, it is opaque and challenging. The approach we have taken to provide people choice, to provide people transparency, and to provide and engage openly with researchers all around the world to be more open about our work, our approaches, our models, and seek their input and feedback to do better is something that inspires me. And we need to continue doing that work. Thank you, Prag. Question for you, Brett. Are there any possibilities that the deal will fall apart? What are those potential triggers? Um, uh, first, uh, there's there's never any 100% certainty um, with any transaction, particularly a transaction of this size. Um, and as a part of, uh, you know, what I mentioned, both value and certainty, um, one of the important parts the board took into consideration is both mitigating the risks that it may not close and uh, in the cases where it may not close, um, uh, how, how the, the company may um uh, recover from those scenarios. Um, I think broadly speaking, um, those risks are um, regulatory, they're financial and other. Um, and so um, it's always a part of any transaction of this size. And I can tell you it was a very important part of the board's process and, and coming to the merger agreement. Parag, there are a number of questions about um, employee retention and att attrition um, and how, how you think about how you think about it? Um, I don't know specifically what the questions are, but let me speak to the area and tell me if I am getting to the questions. Um, this is indeed a period of uncertainty. As I said uh, earlier, all of you have different feelings and views about this news. Many of you are concerned. Some of you are excited. Many people here are waiting to understand how this goes and have an open mind. A lot of what this comes down to is how we continue operating as one team, how we support each other, how we as leaders are more transparent so that we can help you understand what lies ahead as we learn more. And I think if we do that and if we work with each other, uh, we will not have to worry about losing the core of what makes Twitter powerful, which is all of us working together in the interest of our customers every day. And that will be something that is very important to me. And I will do my work to ensure that even as we go through this period of uncertainty or transition, that we're preserving that. Is a question for Brett. If we are made private, what happens to those on the board of directors who voted for this deal? Uh, so, uh, Vidya may be able to correct me here, but uh, uh, I believe the board of directors no longer exists on the other side of closing this transaction. Unless she tells her uh, tells us otherwise, that is correct. That is correct. Um, a question. Um, Probably for you, Brett, was leadership continuity part of the agreement? Will our leaders be sticking around on a specific timetable? Well, as Parag said, um, 
uh, especially in this closing period, you're operating the company as you always have. Um, and uh, until this deal has closed, it is not closed. And a big part of this uh, merger agreement, but all, is ensuring operating continuity um, and ensuring this management team and Prague has a latitude um, to do what he needs to do to continue to make Twitter successful, um, which is not only in all of your interests, but also the interests of uh, Elon Musk, right, to make sure that this company thrives uh, in this period. Um, so I would say yes. Um, and uh, I think I, I just want to echo Prague's remarks that Twitter can just it continues to be the amazingly important service it was yesterday and will continue to be that way in the future. And um, in this closing period and in the future, this is the team that's going to build it. Thank you, Brett. Another question on the process. Did the board negotiate on the selling price? Um, we, uh, uh, as I said, so as the board evaluated this proposal, um, we took into account both value and certainty. Um, and we can't provide many details beyond that, beyond what's in our filings. A question for you, Parag. Is there an updated understanding on what free speech means that we're aware of? Um, I think we all understand what free speech means. Uh, I don't think it's about an updated understanding of that. It's been a concept that's existed for a while. But I think I'm going to try to read the question behind the question here, which is where might uh, Twitter's product go as a private company in the future once this deal closes? And I think that's a great question. Uh, to best gain perspective on this, as I said earlier, we'll find ways to bring Elon for a QA and a with all of you. We, me, a lot of your leadership team will spend time with Elon to understand better what his vision for the future of Twitter might look like and have a two-way dialogue where we inform and educate him on the work we have done and the things we have learned along the way and understand what his ambitions and aspirations might be uh, to see how we can best collaborate. Okay, question for Brett. Um, how do the board, and this goes back to attrition, how do the board and Mr. Musk plan on dealing with a mass exodus, considering acquisition is by a person with questionable ethics? Also, how much input given background did Jack have on this? Uh, so I'll start with uh, the Jack question. Um, Jack is a member of the Twitter board and it was a unanimous vote. Beyond that, um, we can't speculate beyond what was stated in the press release and I'm sure Jack will share his own feelings over time as he deems appropriate. Um, and I don't want to speak on his behalf. Um, um, as it relates to uh, the question of attrition, um, you know, as Parag stated, you know, uh, one of the themes of today is continuity um, and ensuring that Parag and this leadership team continues to operate the business successfully on behalf of our users, on behalf of our customers. Um, and that has obviously been a big topic of discussion at the board. And as I mentioned, an area that uh, is important to Elon Musk as well, because of the importance of Twitter as a service. Uh, I guess this question is for you, Prague. Um, what's in it for our users? Can you point to some upcoming specific changes that will benefit the user experience? That's all the work we are doing is positive changes that benefit our users. A deal document, a deal signing doesn't change how the product that users use. The product changes when we learn about their needs, when we solve problems, when we build products, when we ship new features. And that's what we will continue doing and that's how the product will get better for users. Uh, and it's not the deal document work that we've been doing uh, with Sleepless Night over the last few weeks, uh, that will get that done. Rob, are we anticipating a hiring freeze? Great question. Uh, we haven't thought through the answer to that question, but I think we'll have to work through the details of uh, what it means in terms of our hiring plans uh, in this period between now and closing. 
question for Brett. Will the insider trading window calendar for transactions for Q2 2022 be changed? <laughs> that is a question maybe more appropriate for Vijay or Sean. Uh, I don't believe so. I agree with Brett. I don't see any reason why the trading calendar should change. We're still a public company and we'll still have to report earnings um, for our quarterly results on the same cadence that we did before. So our calendars will be the same. And one just theme on that. Um, Twitter continues to be a public company today, just as it was yesterday. Uh, until this transaction is closed, it's not closed. And we have to operate Twitter as a public company. Um, and I just want to make sure that's clear, uh, clear to everyone because it, uh, there's a lot of answers to questions in that, um, just that understanding. This is a question for you, Brett. Thank. Why was the decision made to pay out, pay out RSUs on a vesting schedule versus at one time? Are major shareholders being paid out on a similar schedule? Feels like a way to get out of paying employees who may leave or get laid off what they were granted. Um, I, I may not understand the, the question correctly, but uh, I think it may go back to Prague's uh, point in his opening, which is, um, the vesting schedules of employees' RSUs remain the same. Um, and at the point of close, instead of being paid in RSUs, it translates into cash. Um, but the uh, uh, people's compensation plans don't change in this transaction. Uh, merely the currency uh, of that, those compensation plans change. And again, we will follow up with this in writing so everyone can really absorb. I know it's hard sort of in real time to take it all in and to, and to retain. And we should, we can be a lot, and we'll be very clear in these documents. Um, there are a couple of questions about um, Trump coming back on the platform. Um, will he, um, I guess that's the question. Will Trump, does this mean Trump will come back on the platform? Barack? Um, I think we've been doing our work to learn about what's happening out there. We constantly evolve our policies. We make decisions for the health of the public conversation every day. We've been doing this work. We will keep doing this work. Once the deal closes, we don't know which direction the platform will go in. I believe when we have an opportunity to speak with Elon in an AMA, it's a question we should address to him. I will, of course, be spending time with him to understand where he sees the future of Twitter, as I said earlier, and to inform him about the approaches we have taken, the principles that have guided us, the lessons we have learned along the way, so that we enable, through collaboration, a thriving Twitter in the future. Parag, can you talk about our ads business? Elon has been vocal about not believing in ads. What can we share with our clients about the future of our ads platform? As Brett and I have said, not a lot changes today. We continue to be monetized primarily through advertising. We often don't talk about this, but advertising is a really powerful tool on the internet. It allows differential pricing in a way that allows an amazing service like Twitter that we all build to be free for all of our users all around the world, whether or not they can pay for it. And that property of advertising is important for a service like Twitter to operate at the scale that it does and to be free. It also applies to a lot of things on the internet. And I can't speak to Elon's beliefs or his plans, but I do believe that Twitter is a business Elon bought a business, and I expect that the way we monetize the business will be important to any owner of this business. Parag, what happens to ESPP? That's a question for you or Vija. Vija, please. Yes, we'll confirm this um, in the FAQ, but my understanding is that we will continue to have the current ESPP period, um, and then we will not have any more. But again, please let us confirm that. Question back to you, Brett. With no board in place, 
who will keep Elon accountable and how? Um, so private companies are operating differently than public companies, um, but private companies are also subject to many of the same uh, regulations we are as a public company um, uh, in each of the jurisdictions that we operate. Um, it's a somewhat nuanced um, questions, but just like not only we're a public company, but we're a Delaware public company and that dictates our governance, um, there will be a new structure um, in this place and um, it doesn't change the broad regulatory structure in which Twitter operates, but certainly changes its governance structure. That's what I would think about it. Question back to you, Parag. Elon made it clear in public that a large part of the reason he bought the platform was because of our moderation policies and disagreements in how we deal with health, something that we place in value very highly within the company. This puts Twitter service and trust and safety, as well as anybody who cares about health on the platform, in a very difficult position. Can you speak your thoughts on this and how those teams will be supported? Great question. I believe Twitter grows as a service, allows for more people to use the product and have a better experience because we're able to make the conversation on Twitter be safe, because we are able to eliminate manipulation, because we are able to remove spammers, because we have built tools, processes for people to be able to feel safe and control their experiences. Twitter service, the role of our policies and the capabilities we've built around content moderation are fundamental to keeping Twitter safe and growing. I believe that there is a lot of work we have to do to continue making that better. Sometimes that means more thoughtful moderation. Sometimes that means making things simpler. Sometimes that means changing product incentives to be able to solve problems through products sometimes instead of policies. So as I think about sort of the future in this closing period, we will continue evolving and iterating to improve the product and the health of the public conversation. Thank you, Frog. I, um, is there any impact to the FTC consent decree? If so, what would it be? Great question. I have not thought about it, Vijay. There should be no impact to that. That um, is a agreement that we're entering into with the government. It's a settlement agreement, and we expect um, that no matter what form this company takes in the future, we will still be subject to that consent decree. I have another question for you, Parag. During the last All Hands, you said that you trust Elon Musk. I think that the, cor the correct quote was, we trust him. So who is we? And talking to Elon, what made you trust him and have the best interests for the future of the company? I don't know what this quote is or where it comes from, but I can speak to sort of the spirit of the question. Um, as I think about uh, Twitter and its value, and based on the conversation I had with him uh, when we were excited to have him join our board, that was because as a major shareholder and an opinionated user, <laughs> sorry, um, we wanted uh, that voice in our boardroom so that we could learn and so that we would have more value created within the company for all of our shareholders as a result of having Elon on the board. Since then, uh, we've seen uh, a bunch of things happen culminating in today where uh, the company is being taken private. Now, the way I think about what Elon wants to achieve the way I think about the words he has said and interpreting them. He believes, sorry, I don't mean to quote him, but like 
I'm repeating some of what I have heard, which is not to say uh, that I'm using that to predict what might happen. He wants Twitter to be a powerful, positive force in the world, just like all of us. He believes, and this is me assuming things based on a few conversations. He believes Twitter matters, just like all of us. We can collaborate with people when you have some core shared foundations. We might all disagree on many other things. Some of them might be really important. What I go back to when encountering such a phenomena is to take a step back and think about my approach to the world. I come to the world with an open mind. I remain optimistic. And at my core, because I've spent the last 10 years here, I believe in the power of Twitter. When someone else believes in the power of Twitter, there is a shared point that you reach, even if there are many other ways where you might not share views. And when you think about keeping an open mind, when you think about being optimistic, that's what drives me. This next question is for Brett. Brett said that there were certain protections around benefits and working conditions for the one year following close as part of the deal. Can you share the details of what those protections are? Um, what I would say is that the uh, merger agreement really reflects what I think is a very um, typical uh, operating agreement that enables uh, Prague to operate the company in the period between this signature and closing the deal. Um, and uh, I think uh, we feel very comfortable that it gives this team the ability to continue to make the company successful in between signing and closing the transaction. Um, the deals uh, details are a bit technical, and you can see a lot of it in our filing, um, but it's really about um, providing that um, ability to continue to operate the company. Thank you, Prague. There are lots of questions about remote work, and I believe the theme of the questions of what, what will happen to remote, remote work is remote work going away. Can you address that? Um, sure. Um, as we've announced sort of our policies around remote work, they're not going to change uh, as we operate through this period. We will continue. A significant, significant fraction of our workforce is either fully or partially remote. That is how we've worked for the last several years, especially the last two years. And that is how we will work going forward. I believe that we've been very effective at it and we've been getting better at it. So in my mind, it's in everyone's interest for Twitter to continue operating with this amazing remote culture that we've built. Um, there were a few questions about, I think it's sort of a two-part, and Brett, you addressed this a little bit earlier about why are we finding things like this out in the press? And then also, why and how are things leaking to the press, given how sort of small and closed this, the group working on this was? Yeah, um, uh, maybe polar opposite questions, but I'll take, take them both. Um, so, you know, one of the important principles of a board in a situation like this is to have control of the process so we can represent the interests of all of our shareholders. And one of the most important things in that process is maintaining confidentiality so that we have the time and the space to deliberate, to evaluate the intrinsic value of the company and the risks of the management plan and to have those um, discussions and processes uh, remain confidential, uh, which is one of the um, assets that we have uh, as a board doing our fiduciary duties for the company. Um, there's a lot of people involved and a lot of advisors in this process. I can't speak to why people leak, but um, people do. Um, I can't imagine how disruptive it was for all of you. And I just want to apologize for that. Um, you know, I, you and I and we all care about this company and to read those leaks in the press just in my mind represents a disrespect for what is an extremely sensitive and important process. Um, 
it seems inevitable in these processes because of the number of people involved uh, who are advising the board and management um, through this process. Um, so as much as I find it distasteful, um, it is fairly common. Um, for the reasons, you know, why do we read about this in the press? As we think about achieving the right outcome um, for our shareholders, um, I think it would not do justice to that process, uh, unfortunately, to have that level of transparency because it's a big part of negotiating um, the right outcome um, for, for all of our stakeholders. And that's why confidentiality is just, confidentiality is just such an important part of the process. Brad, another question for you. Are any projections for a possible merger with Elon's other companies, Starlink and Tesla Phone PI and Twitter apps? Not sure I can uh, speak on uh, Elon's behalf on that front. Rob, there seems to be um, many questions about um, new hires and how this will affect them. Any thoughts on, on those who, are, who are, have recently joined Twitter? For those who have recently joined Twitter, not a lot changes. I don't see a difference in sort of the work you do, the compensation programs that you benefit from, all the benefits you have uh, changing at this time. I might be missing the gist of the question, though. And they will be granted their RSUs. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Sorry, I missed the... No, that's okay. No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is general sentiment just looking at the Slack questions around um, uncertainty about what happens after the deal closes. Um, I know you've spoken about this, um, but I think it merits um, to hear hearing from you about this again. Yeah, I think uh, that is a fair question. And there is indeed uncertainty about what happens after the deal closes. But, but there are ways where we will learn more as time goes on. We will directly hear from Elon. I and the management team and the board, members of the board, will continue to spend time with Elon and learn more. And as we learn more, we'll share with you. So while there is a lot of uncertainty about what happens after the deal closes today, over time, that will decrease. Thank you. I have a question for Brad. Given that our stock was $70 last year, what message should we take away about the health strength of the company being sold for 54? So uh, when thinking about value uh, in a transaction like this, the phrase uh, is really about intrinsic value. Um, uh, obviously, the stock market has been a roller coaster over the past couple of years through the pandemic, um, through the current downturn. And it's important as, you know, you all think about value, you really think about um, intrinsic value, which is um, based on, I believe, robust financial methodologies based on the operating plan of the company um, relative to um, the offer um, represented um, by uh, from Elon Musk. Um, and what I'll tell you is that based on the analysis and the perception of risk, the perception of certainty and the perception of value, um, the board unanimously um, decided that the offer from Elon um, offered the best value for our shareholders. I'll ask a question that I'm going to answer. Is it possible to get a, a full FAQ stock going to document all these questions and answers? Hard to follow this channel and easy to understand when some of this is written down. So I just want to reiterate, yes, not only are we going to be capturing the questions that were answered here, we are going to be capturing the questions that were not answered here and distribute to the company ASAP. So please uh, stay tuned for after the all hands. I know we're up on time, so I just wanted to give um, Parag the opportunity to, uh, to, to close. First, um, gratitude to Brett for joining us and answering questions from all of you. Second, gratitude for so many people who worked really hard over the last several weeks. And third, our strength as a company comes from being together, from being one team. It's, it's our support for each other. It's our teamwork that gives us strength. That is what allows us to build this service and improve it every day. As you've heard from all of us, we don't have all the answers. 
this is a period of uncertainty. It is even more important to be one team through a period of uncertainty and have full faith that this team together will continue to improve Twitter and truly realize Twitter's unrealized potential that we all feel within ourselves as time goes on. Thank you everyone for joining us. We'll have a one team next week where we'll continue this conversation, but also talk about other work that's happening all around the company. Thank you everyone.